Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. In the current environment, <clears throat> the answer cannot be to vilify all American Muslims uh, or to drive them into hiding in this country. Uh, now more than ever, we need to work with the Muslim community. Uh, and it's not just a, it's not a monolith, it is communities across the country um, to encourage them to help us help them if they see somebody traveling in the wrong direction in their own community. It leaves you speechless. This is the head of the Department of Homeland Security who in any other nation would have been fired at the very least, if not indicted for, uh, I don't know, malpractice? The terrorist attack occurred last week, and this jerk is telling us not to vilify Muslims. And to top it off, he's going to hold a press conference this afternoon at a mosque tied to Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas. This is Jed Johnson. Does anyone know who this man is? Does anyone know why Obama has not fired him? Does anyone know why this jerk still has his job? The answer is quite clear, because we have no opposition press. No opposition party, and the people are completely stymied, not knowing why this government is so soft-peddling Muslim terrorism in America and around the world. Now, having said that, this is a very difficult issue for all of us. They bend over backwards to, let us say, sanctify, yes, sanctify the Muslim community and, and the Islamic religion, and yet they are not too sensitive to vilify all Christians or all gun owners. Every speech out of these people's mouths is about how bad gun owners are. They don't trust you. Now, why do they trust all Muslims and no gun owners? What's that about? Why does Obama have such a um, caustic view of Christianity and Christians, such as, example, he brought up the Crusades a few months ago, remember that? Never talks about the Muslim crusade that is ongoing around the world. Now. Again, this is a tough problem. It's a tough problem for all of us. People in this country are furious right now. They know the government is either incompetent or, let us put it to you this way, working for the other side. And I'm sure as I stand here that there are those within the government who are working for the other side. You say, well, that's paranoid. No, it isn't. 72 members of the Department of Homeland Security. 72. 72. 72 of them, 72 members of this moron's DHS is on a watch, are on a watch list by various divisions of the government. Do you have any idea what that means? Can you figure out all the moving parts to this deceit, this grand deceit that's going on? I think that some of them are just stunned that they've gotten away with so much for so long. 72 people. In Department of Homeland Security or what? You didn't see the article? On terrorist watch list. And here's the head of the Department of Homeland Security, Jed Johnson, telling us not to vilify Muslims. Representative Steve Lynch, Democrat Massachusetts, Democrat Massachusetts, Democrat Massachusetts, said that 72 employees of this fool at DHS are listed on the U.S. terrorist watch list according to this Democrat lawmaker. Can you believe this? Now, why is he not being forced to resign? Why? Well, you have to figure it out for yourself, boys and girls. We're living not in strange times, but eerie times. They're eerie, eerie. I had intended to start the show by talking about my dog, Teddy, because I said there's enough of there's enough. People can only take this, this terrorism for so long. But when you have this entire establishment in in uh in sync with each other 
saying the same exact things with Lynch, saying that anyone whose speech approaches this or that is going to be looked at. Then she modified it. She didn't mean speech. She meant actions. But she did what she had to do. Her boss man told her what to do. That's right. Her controller said, you go out and you threaten anyone who says one word about Muslims that we're going to crack down on them. That's what she said Friday. Remember that speech? That's the head attorney general, her attorney, the number one law enforcement official in the United States of America told us, no, don't even don't even think what you know to be true. So how do we deal with this problem? Well, it's logical. What you do is you bring in as many Muslims as you can, as fast as you can, without uh, vetting them. That, that's smart. Especially from Somalia. You make certain you're bringing in as many Somalis as you can. Because as you well know, that's not a terrorist hotbed. This is what your government's doing. They're bringing in refugees by the tens of thousands as quickly as they can until a saturation point is reached. After which point it will be impossible to deport the bad ones. You heard me. D-E-P-O-R-T. It's a word in a dictionary. There's a law on the books for deportation. What sane nation brings people in from a hotbed of a, a nation with a, that's a hotbed of terrorism in a time of terror? I was going to ask you today, but I didn't ask you that. Instead, I went on to this because it's getting madder by the second because they're escalating their, let us put it this way, their madness. There's so many different ways to say what Obama is doing and not doing, and I'm sure you've heard them all. The only question remains is, what do you do about it? That's the only thing you ask yourself every day. What do you do about it to protect yourself and your families from the next Muslim terror attack? It's not going to be a Buddhist who comes into your mall with a machine gun. It's not going to be a Hindu that comes into your mall with a machine gun, etc. You get the picture. So you can't vilify all Muslims. We know that. You'd be crazy to say that. But on the other hand, people are saying it. Whether you want to hear it or not, that's what people in America are thinking, and that's what they're saying. They're saying if all the terrorists are coming out of one religion, then there must be some fundamental problem with that religion. Isn't that a logical thing to say? Let me ask you something. If you're a Buddhist, do your Buddhist teachings tell you that if you see a non-Buddhist to convert them or kill them? I have the Buddhist uh, teachings right in my hand, the teaching of Buddha. I don't see anything in the Buddhist Bible, so to speak, because there is no Bible. It's a collection of sayings. There's no leader of Buddhism. There's no head guy. It's sayings. The theory of mind only in the real state of things. To a man a river seems like a river, but to a hungry demon which sees fire and water, it may seem to be like fire. Therefore, to speak to a man about a river existing would have some sense, but to the demon it would have no meaning. In like manner, it can be said that things are like illusions. They can be said neither to be existent nor non-existent. And so that's Buddhism. Doesn't talk anything about the infidel, about uh, cutting the throat of the infidel, about killing the infidel, about charging the infidel tax. It doesn't talk about mutilating young girls to deny them sexual gratification. Nothing in this Buddhist teaching does that. Now let's pick up the next religious book and the next and the next and the next until we all come with our breathlessness to the one book that teaches things that you cannot believe are, are even being put in print these days. So you say, well, most Muslims don't believe that. No, they don't. So what do you do with those who do? Like the two who machine gunned the people last week in uh, California. He read the book cover to cover. She read the book cover to cover over and over and over and over again, brainwashing themselves with the hatred. So if the government says, and rightly so, you can't vilify all Muslims for the acts of a very small number, although the small number is getting a little larger uh, over the uh, last days and months and years. Seems to be metastasizing under Mr. Hussein Obama. Doesn't seem to be contained. The virus is spreading. The cancer is spreading around the world. It is not being contained. And so the question comes back to what do we do about it? Now, we all are stymied by our freedoms, and we are imprisoned by this Trojan horse of our freedoms. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, Second Amendment. We all love these amendments, don't we? And, of course, we want them applied to ourselves, but not to others. That's the problem. We like our freedom of religion because our religion doesn't teach hatred and murder. But you can't then apply it only to Muslims. 
because their book does teach hatred and murder. I'm not making it up. I wouldn't say it. 132 places it calls for uh, hurting the infidel. And so we're all suffering, not knowing what to do, so we're buying guns. Gun stocks soar. Smith & Wesson highest sales since 07. Sheriff says licensed owners have a responsibility to carry. Document reveals ISIS plot for world domination in chilling detail. Did you hear my guest on Friday, Walid Shobat, a man who used to uh, be a member of a terrorist group called uh, the Palestine Liberation Organization? Did you hear what he said on the show when I asked him, how does this end? He said, it doesn't end until millions of us are dead. He said, that's the only way anything will change in this country of ours. You know, from having talked to your liberal relatives and liberal friends on a daily basis, that they are brainwashed and they're ignoramuses and nothing will change their mind. They don't even know about San Bernardino. It wasn't even a blip, maybe a blip on their mental landscape last week. They see no evil, they hear no evil, they don't connect it to Islam, they don't connect it to individuals, they don't want to know it's connected to jihad and a worldwide war, they don't care. That is the difference between this generation and the generation that defeated Hitler. Yes, you see, America was a fun-loving nation in the 1930s, I read, and Hitler thought he could conquer America as well. They used to laugh. He had trained his boys to kill from birth. Did you know the Hitler youth were trained very much like the Palestinians are training their youth right now? Trained to hate, trained to kill, trained to murder, trained to, trained to burn, trained to not feel anything while they take human life. Hitler did that with his, with his Hitler youth. Did you know that? And so, therefore, they emboldened themselves, saying, look at those weak British. Look at those weak Americans. Look at those weak French. They'll never fight back. Well, thank God Hitler was wrong. Thank God Hitler was wrong. Because the West did fight back, and they crushed him forever. They destroyed the thousand-year Reich. So once again, we're facing a terrorist enemy who thinks that we're weak and we will not fight back. And they're wrong. We will fight back. If we can survive the plague of Barack, Barack Obama, if we can survive the plague of the psychosis of liberalism another year, if we can survive it, and if that Harrod and Hillary Clinton is found out to be what she is, which is a continuation of him in a skirt. That's just two ifs. We will defeat them. They will be destroyed. I can guarantee you as I stand here, the world will not put up with this forever. And it was only because of Russia that stood up to them that suddenly the British are now bombing them, the French are now bombing them. Not because of Obama, it was because of Putin, the man that Obama hates, that there's an actual air war against some, and I say some, of the targets of this ISIS. Now, who is ISIS? We keep hearing ISIS, ISIS, Shmaisis. Who are they? Where did these Muslims come from? They weren't hatched out of an egg on Mars and brought here. I want you to think about this. The Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, some say of the Levant, I get it, I understand that. We've talked about it weeks ago. The Levant means a much broader land area. Where they come from? Who are they? Who's running them? Let's talk about that when I return. And my dog, Teddy which is a far more interesting topic on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Everyone's asking who Jet Johnson is, the head of... This, this shadowy man, no one knows who he is. He failed us in Boston. I believe he was, I don't know if he was Homeland, but let's say he failed us last week. And he went silent and dark. No one heard from him. Now he pops up and says, watch out for hateful speech. Copying what Loretta, what Lynch said the other day, whatever her first name is. Who is this man? How can they take people like this and make them in charge of protecting us? What does the name Jem mean? It's pronounced J, taken from a Liberian chief who reportedly saved his grandfather's life while his distinguished grandfather, Dr. Johnson, was on a League of Nations mission to Liberia in 1930. Okay, so now we know. Liberian chief. Very nice. Very good. And he was a trial lawyer for a big firm in, on Wall Street. He was born in New York City, the son of Norma, who worked for Planned Parenthood. Oh, okay. Okay. 